Today's a really special day because it's the culmination of two years of work and the start of what I expect will be a really exciting journey. It is building into a vision, but right now it is a lot of angst of people who are frustrated because for 20 years we've been talking about this stuff called sustainability, but all the sustainability indicators are actually gotten worse. We are collectively starting to realize that we have put too much faith in systems. Systems that are very often social constructs, uh, where we almost um, discard our responsibility to the environment and to our children or to fellow human beings. Hopefully the spark that we feel jumps to many other people and that everybody will act, uh, will do what they can to make sure that we actually work towards a world that is worth living. The bigger challenge is how are we going to change the dominant paradigm, the system in which we all operate, in which we all function today. And with system I mean the dominant economic system, which I think to a large extent can be blamed for the state of the world. Management education today is very much intellectual. It's really downloading information on the students and it's not developing a student. I expect that we will find in the audience today people who can share our passion for deep change. Business schools and in higher education institutions are also listening and part of our conversation. How can we make sure that business, one of the main stakeholders in business, of business schools, actually, actually demands further change from us and how can we make sure that we deliver what business is asking for? Please tell us throughout the one and a half days what you want from Prime and how Prime can help you to go a step further in your journey to make responsible management education a reality. We're going to launch 50 plus 20 right now and right here. Without a doubt, I'm sure you know that our work here today is a calling. To help us reflect upon this, I'm going to share with you a short poem by George Herbert. It's entitled, The Call. Come my way, my truth, my life, such a way as gives us breath. Such a truth as ends all strife, such a life as killeth death. Come, my joy, my love, my heart, such a joy. I was 22 years old at the original Rio conference. I was studying business at BSL, the school I now run as dean. Since Rio 92, I sensed a new world opening up, a world where I can combine my personal passions with my work experience and help business become sustainable. 50 plus 20 is a collaboratory. It's been an open source effort of TRLI, of UN Prime, and of the World Business School Council for Sustainable Business. Our aim was to come up with a radically new vision for management education. We did that by asking big questions. What kind of world do we want? What does that mean for the kinds of societies we need? What is the role of business and the economy? 
and what should business contribute to this new world? What kinds of leaders do we need to achieve this transformation? And as a result, what kind of management education do we need? We've worked in a collaborative process with people from around the world and more than 100 thought leaders. And many of the people in this room have been involved. So if you have been involved in any way, large or small, in this project, we invite you just to stand up now. Thank you. Together, we have created a vision beyond incremental change. We call it management education for the world. Management education in service of the common good. We see three fundamental roles. We reframe education. We give a concrete purpose to research and we introduce a new role, public engagement, as a new responsibility for business schools. This is about new benchmarks and the benches that you see on the stage and over on the sides have been created by artists from around the world out of recycled materials. They symbolize this and we invite you to sit in them and feel the passion and the energy that they represent for a world that's socially just and environmentally sustainable. So today, right here and right now, we officially release the 50 plus 20 agenda. It's just the start. So now, we would like to bring you, in closing, the voices and faces from around the world who have helped us to define the 50 plus 20 vision. So sit back, turn off your emails, open your hearts and your souls, and listen to what the people have to say. Here's half the truth. Economic growth improves lives. But what about the fact that growth is putting us all at risk? How could it happen that we educate managers who pretend that they can handle risks? And then the financial crisis enters through the back door. Half-truths are often the biggest lies. If you look at the UN Millennium Goals, none of them call for larger corporations or bigger profits. They all deal with social issues. Health, education, environment. All basic needs. So, what is growth? Is it financial gain and monetary benefit? Is profit growth? What should we grow for a better life? And why? It's time to put economics and management in its proper place. Serving people, planet, and then profit. The main factor in business school ranking is... How much a student earns after graduating. That's madness. We are growing a culture of greed. For over 50 years, we've taught management theories that are based on flawed assumptions. Our old benchmarks are no longer valid. Exponential growth is possible on a finite planet. Free markets are rational and efficient. Corporations have to maximize shareholder wealth. We've been measuring the wrong things. Crony capitalism produces agents who are unqualified to think and lead responsibly. The biggest problem, those leaders won't take us into a sustainable future. 50 plus 20 envisions an alternative. Now it is time to set new benchmarks. To take a wider perspective. See how interconnected things are.
management and business should return to their roots in philosophy. Exploring the path to the truth and a life worth living. The purpose has been lost. It has become empty. But people want purpose in what they do. If they realize that the context of their work is empty, and on top of that, harmful, then business becomes redundant. It's no longer relevant. Last year, a number of American business students walked out of class. They were fed up being taught free market capitalism as the only economic system. Today, when you teach economics, you teach capitalism by default. Business schools simply don't question the dominant economic paradigm. Simply adding ethics and sustainability to a curriculum that's already fundamentally flawed. It's urgent. This demands leaders with a transdisciplinary mindset. There's no planet B. Remember. 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 We have to educate, enable, engage. Take education. Leaders require empathy. A deep understanding of themselves and others. And the ability to relate these aspects to the environment. We have to promote the moral courage to do the right thing. Orientated by social profit. Guided by practical wisdom. We have to develop the human being in the leader and the leader in the human being. Secondly, enable organizations to internalize the true value and true costs of doing business. We need stewards of the earth who understand the bigger picture, who look after the whole planet, and not just after the share price. Finally, the biggest challenge, engage. How do we transform our economic system? It is about time that we break down the walls between academics and practitioners. Titles and tenure mean less and less. Become public intellectuals. Encourage public criticism. Make your research accessible. Deans and administrators shift management education towards the common good. Business schools set examples of new benchmarks for sustainable management. Fifty plus twenty is here to hold the space. To provide a powerful, safe environment. To invite the whole person. Soul, mind, heart and hands. We demonstrate a collaboratory of learning, teaching, and research filled with the burning issues. Hunger, energy, water, climate, migration, corruption, democracy and capitalism that serve the common good. Complex shifts. We accept the challenge and we collaborate. We believe all of us own the responsibility to bring about change. We believe it is the responsibility of all of us to create change. We've been competing like mad to become the best in the world. 
Now it's time to become the best for the world. Najlepsze dla świata. Melhor para o mundo. Pour le monde. Pour le monde. For the world. For the world. For the world. interesting to see how people responded when you talk as we did with heart and soul. Somebody said to me afterwards, you know, this is the first time I feel uplifted and can see a vision of the future that I would want to be part of in all this conversation about what's wrong. So it was very good. Thanks for being there.